the most important elements and themes that first year students should take from my area and my background, I would say go out and get yourself some books on British Columbia history. Don't just watch the videos and the YouTube, whatever. We do a bit of that. Get some good books by BC historians. And something that made me feel very happy at my last BC history class, which just finished last week, was a very outdoorsy, youthful, environmental studies, probably, student who in the break went out and discovered a box of books that somebody was giving away for a dollar a book. And he found a book that the editors of BC Studies have put together of the best articles in their journal over the last 30 years, a great little BC book. And he put his dollar and he took the book and he looked so proud of his book. And he was sort of flipping through, so we were joking all the way through that he's got his first BC history book, isn't this great? And he actually came back to the next class and he actually read bits of this. And so just to be able to tweak people's interest in the province and get some of our good BC studies, the journal is a good place to go. All the people working on British Columbia are, are contributing, usually little golden nuggets of what they work on. As I mentioned uh, dig into a little bit of, of, of Cole Harris, the resettlement of British Columbia. He walked you through the fur trade and through great epidemics that have sort of really plagued Indigenous communities in pre-contact times and also post-contact time, times. Read a little bit about, about the, the gold rush. Dan Marshall, one of our graduates of our program who was taught Native newcomer relations here, has written on the, the dissertation on what he calls the Fraser River War, which took place. And so so get involved in that. Really get to know your place. Look around your own libraries and bookstores from, from, for, for books that relate to your place. And then as you scout, scout around, as you travel through British Columbia, take, take the Trans-Canada Highway and try to relate what you're reading to what you're passing through. So don't just breeze along the Fraser Canyon, but stop at Yale, places like Yale which have a very rich, often painful, history. We have really big gold rush burn, b booms there. You know, our rail system, which is almost defunct in terms of passenger trail travel, has sort of, it, it's really an important part of our history. That is important. And Yale had newspapers. Yale had opium dens. Yale had, there's a Chinese history that really has to be told in relation to Victoria and in relation to the whole Fraser Canyon and our whole province. All these young Chinese men, thou by the thousands who came, that's just opening up now, thank goodness. Uh, so that think about that as you travel through that part. As you go through Hell's Gate, maybe take that tram across the river and think of what it was, must have been like in 1913 when the blasting from the CNR on the other side of the, this tight Fraser Canyon uh, caused a rock slide that actually blocked the river. Think of how the indigenous people who depended on those salmon, whose life world was around, built around those salmon, felt when that was in the major the context of one of the largest salmon runs. So that salmon couldn't make past that. Matthew Evenden at UBC in the geography department has written lots of that on that. There's a lots on the, river, the Fraser River. Uh, do that. It's incredibly important. I try to encourage the students in my class too. Have fun with your children even, or with your siblings, or with your roommates. To dig into some of the primary sources, our traders' journals are published. Some of the missionaries' journals are published. So you can follow, um, you can follow Bishop George Hills coming up the river, you know, as he keeps his journal in 1860. What does he see? As you're traveling across up the river, you see lots of things in 2014, but what does George Hill see? Two years after the gold rush in 1860, he has another journal for 1862, huge smallpox epidemics, just leveled indigenous communities. What does he see? What does he hear from indigenous people who are saying, you know, somebody abducted my wife and my two daughters. I haven't seen them since. You know, just that kind of thing. What does he think of travel and the landscape? Uh, George Dawson, his journals are published. He was a, he was a surveyor in the 
from the uh, representing the Canadian government, from the Geological Survey of Canada. He was from Nova Scotia, which interests me. Born in Nova Scotia, I'm from Nova Scotia too. Father ended up as a principal at McGill University. He, because of this disability, he was, he was homeschooled. He had a spinal thing that really didn't allow him to grow beyond about four foot eight or ten. So despite this terrible phys physical disability, he ended up in British Columbia in the 1870s traveling every route off grid route you could imagine as a tiny little man with these eyes, perhaps because of his homeschooling and his geological father. Father is a famous geologist. He just saw everything. He knew what he saw in the rocks and the plants and the trees. And the, he had a very Victorian lens that he looked through to see the indigenous people. That, when you understand it as a Victorian thing, also is of interest. If you read it that way, it'll look racist to us now, but interesting to see how he saw the indigenous people. I love these early lenses. Everything changed after the CPR. When it was, it was kind of like getting air travel, you know, everybody could get everywhere. We could get everybody from, you didn't, you, you suddenly you could get here in a matter of days. And you could also go everywhere and develop in towns and, you know, preemptions. The indigenous people start really protesting after the CPR in the 1880s. And that protest effort really is one of, in the 1910s, is another one of my areas of huge interest. How do we get at their voices of protest? They really did, because then the landscape really became partitioned up. So things prior to that, the scene prior to that, the 1870s interest me, and you'll, you can really, it's like this visual thing. Your kids would love it. Uh, in the as you walk through these journals because it's day to day, he's just notating where he is, who he's bumping into, what he's seeing, the kinds of things. So to be able to sort of go through in 2014 against the backdrop of these journals, reading them aloud as you're going through the Fraser Canyon and the Thompson Canyon and various other watersheds and travel routes, the old Caribou Highway right up to Barkerville. I even say read Bruce Hutchinson. That's another. Bruce Hutchinson was one of our great Victoria newspaper journalists. So he's written what I think is a classic book on the Fraser, and he loved the Fraser. It's 1960 or something. Again, you have to read it through the lens of somebody who's definitely a product of the 30s, 40s, 50s. So much more our grandparents' generation. And that's its value, really. But it's a beautifully written book. He can write. It's accessible. And he does, you know, even by horseback, he loves the Fraser. Do we how do we instill that passion in people? He just this oozes this love for what we call British Columbia. I, you know, it got this name in this questionable way, but Bruce Hutchinson's and others, all these others, primary sources on our province, especially by Bruce, people like Bruce Hutchinson who loved it to bits, despite the lens that we might question, are really important.